morning, everybody. Welcome to the, the Maverick Man pod. Uh, the Maverick Man, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm on the road today. Got a good start. Uh, got a, a load. Uh, I, I only bid, I think, on one before it. So I was out the door pretty quick. Uh, like within a half hour to an hour of waking up. Uh, I saw a load on... Uh, 200 miles from Massachusetts to New York. Um, I think dropping off right in the city, which that's going to be interesting. Uh, it's my first time doing a drop off over there. But um, you know, my my goal today was to find something to take me to New York, so that I can go from New York to pretty much anywhere in the country. That's kind of like a hot zone from what I've seen so far. Um, Last time I was there last week, I I had a run to the JFK airport, and I was sitting there for, uh, for a few hours, and I saw probably 60 loads come in between New York, New Jersey, like within 150 miles of where I was. There's a ton of work to be had, so I took note of that uh, with my game plan for starting off this week. I want to do over the road this week, so. Uh, I figured I would try to get something out to New York and then from there my goal is to go either west or south trying to avoid any snow or any cold weather going up north right now uh, I'm driving through Connecticut it's 42 degrees out so that's not too bad I mean that's it's pretty reasonable but basically uh, try to keep it sunny like it is now try to find some decent weather It'll be my, my first time going outside of the region. So I'm trying to make it as manageable as possible. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, as far as what I'm hauling today, based on what I put or saw on the, the, the load when it came into me, um, the load came in through Telegram from my dispatcher, has all the information. The miles, it said like 200 or whatever. Um, the pickup was in a small town in Massachusetts, uh, going to New York. Now, when they give you the the information, they they'll they'll put the the zip code, which I probably should have paid attention to because I, I was I was thinking New York maybe uh, to the airport again or right onto Long Island, um, away from the city. Uh, it didn't really dawn on me to check the zip code, which was my mistake because. I'm gonna have to go in, into the actual city, it looks like, based on the address that I saw for the delivery. Um, but, but yeah, so I, I went there, it said 500 pounds on the information I received when I got to the site. Uh, spoke to the guy at the loading dock. It's actually only four, it's four or five gallon buckets. Uh, so I carry two of them, you know, farmer's walk style. The guy there was really nice. He, he carried the other two. Definitely not 500 pounds. Um, and you know maybe I'll throw the, the, the photo in here or I'll, I'll post a separate video showing the freight and showing my journey for the day. Um, but it's, I, I just pinned them with the ratchet straps to, to each side of the truck, so two on each side. Maybe it's like, maybe 300 pounds. I'd be surprised if it's even that. Um, I'd say probably about 200 pounds is what the actual weight is, 200 to 250. Um, but yeah, so I, I bid a dollar fifty a mile to get me out to New York, which pretty good. Um, like when you do regional and local stuff, you, you typically want to do higher bidding. Um, like usually I, I, I try, try not to leave my house for less than $250. But for this, it's, it's fine doing a dollar fifty a mile. It's still regional technically, you know. I'm still within New England, um, but my my goal is to try to do a, a longer haul uh, after I hit New York. And then once I hit New York, I'm gonna I, sh I estimate that I'm gonna have a lot of options. Um, and side note, I uh, hit up one of my friends who is going to college there. Um, and he's gonna meet me there. We're gonna have a quick lunch as I'm looking for a load out of there. Uh, it'd be great to see him. 
He's going to Columbia. Um, I've known him since we've been in, I think he moved from Minnesota to Massachusetts. I think we were in third grade when we met, so it'd be great to see him. Uh, we might have to do like a hazard light, pull over on the side of the road in Manhattan type of deal, uh, where we just have some pizza or something and catch up. Uh, if I'm lucky enough to find a place to park, and uh, we'll find like a place that we can actually go and sit down and hang out for a bit. But um, you know, that's one cool aspect about this this type of work is that if you have friends, you know, friends, family all, all over the country, you can kind of kind of make your trips around going to visit them. Uh, you know, I got family down in Florida, which I guess you know, like who doesn't? You know, most people have older relatives or young, even younger family that uh, a lot of people have retired of Florida. I, I have a good friend of mine that lives down in you know, the, the southern part of Florida. You know, at some point, if I get stuck down there or make it more, more manageable, I have a cousin that lives over the, down down towards that same area as well. Um, you know, so, so that's kind of like the fun aspect of it. You, know, you can kind of make it so that you, um, you have the option to go visit family and friends, catch up with them. Uh, also, too, if they're nice enough, maybe instead of sleeping in the van that night, you can you can take a nice night's rest in a bed. Versus, you know, for me, I got a little uh, it's like a cot, not the most comfortable. Uh, but so far, all the loads I've gotten, which has shocked me, have been very light. You know, this is the heaviest load I've had so far and it's probably 200 pounds so not really affecting the fuel economy uh, last week my trip back from New York I was getting 21 and a half miles to the gallon and I'm driving a uh, Ford 350 transit gas not even a diesel so that that actually surprised me uh, right now going to New York I think the topographical situation that I think it's more of an incline uh, so I'm getting 17.4 uh, which matches pretty much what I was getting going into New York last time so I think it just has to do with the elevation I would imagine we're going uphill because uh, I can't think of any other reason why there'd be a, like a four mile per gallon difference but uh but yeah, I'm, I'm just cruising along. Um, I should be there in about two hours. Beautiful day. Uh, hopefully, you know, God willing, everything will go smooth. And um, my goal is to find a load maybe down south, maybe uh, to the Carolinas would be great. Or, or maybe even like Georgia. I would stop into Georgia for a bit. You know, we got some family over there, go say hi. Uh, but we'll see, you know, even like, so uh, my, my top targets, I guess, would be the Carolinas, Georgia, or Tennessee. Um, so I'm going to see what we got coming out of New York. And then if I'm not seeing anything I like, maybe I'll just make a day of just bouncing around ping ponging all throughout New York, New Jersey, um, you know, that whole area. And then I'll check the weather after and see if... It's not too cold. I'll consider going up north, but uh, no, we'll we'll take it in stride. Um, as far as today, I I was listening to Colin Noir on Joe Rogan's podcast. I think it's episode number twenty ninety four. Um, re really good episode. Um, you know, towards the end, after talking about gun rights and. And how, how insane it is that people, you know, these states, you know, Massachusetts is one of them, but I know like California is, as far as I know, I think it's the most extreme state. Maybe New York is up there with it as far as um, like your license to carry laws and restrictions and 10 round magazine restrictions. And uh, it just blows my mind because they're. You have, you have these people, you know, they and they highlight this on the, on the podcast. But they, they have you have these people making these laws and these regulations that make absolutely no sense um, when applied into real life. You 
know, like all the bands and everything to do with AR-15s, and you had these people that, these politicians who talk about AR-15s like they're, you know, shooting cannons, you know, like they'll, they'll talk about, oh, if you, you can, if you use it to go hunting, you can blow up a deer and all this stuff, and it's an extremely small round. It's like, you know, my, you go hunting with a 22 is not, not a whole lot difference in the, the size of the round. So, you know, I guess the, the main point is you have people that are making rules and regulations that make absolutely no sense to your legal gun owners. And, and it just makes it harder for people to protect themselves, unfortunately, um, that live in these high crime areas. You know, if you go out to, to Chicago, for example, which... There's a lot of gang violence in Chicago. If you're just a regular citizen, you know, you don't have, like, you have to, one, be able to just get a firearm. I'm sure, the background checks and all that, probably a process there, like it is in Massachusetts. Um, you have all your, your restrictions, 10 round magazines and all that. Um, and also, too, if you do find yourself in, in a sticky situation, all the like all the stress of the situation beyond just the fact that somebody is either attacking you or robbing you all the stress of the situation is basically on you because if you make one false move if you if they turn their back and I'm, I'm not a lawyer or anything but like if they they come at you with a gun and they see or a knife and they see you pull out a gun they turn around to go run or something or if they just happen to turn their shoulder and you shoot them and you know maybe they can argue that the guy was running away and uh, like there's a whole lot of it's just a lot to it where if you it's bad enough you're in that situation you just want to find peace and resolve the situation and take care of the threat and uh it's just it's just awful what what the politicians are doing to, to law-abiding citizens in this country at this point um so I just thought that's very interesting, and, and and you brought up a really good example too about all this fear with AR-15s, and also to the, like the the fact that people call them assault rifles and all this other stuff, it's automatic weapons, and in most states, it's I mean maybe all states, like without a special license, it's illegal to have automatic firearms. Like I I, I know in Massachusetts, that's a massive crime, unless you're one of the few that. Or law enforcement in that, in that situation um, that does have access to automatic firearms. So it's like it makes no sense. You like that guy Colin. He's just trying to promote gun safety, and he's talking like he, he's talking about how he's banned from all these different platforms. So you're you're restricting people from getting their license, their their firearms license. You're restricting them learning safe firearm practices. But yet on Instagram, you can go on and see. 15 shootings and beheadings in a row on your feed but if you post a, a clip of, about you know this is how you safely operate this firearm you could get banned or restricted or shadow banned or all, all these different things what like what kind of world are we living in you know it makes absolutely no sense um, but just going back to one example that either Colin or Joe brought up that was very interesting Colin was, was talking about these the case at, I believe it was Virginia Tech, around 20, 2011 or so, 2012, 13, in that time frame, um, where the shooter didn't use an AR-15, because that's what, you know, a lot of people drive home is mass shootings, AR-15s, all this stuff, um, and he used pistols. But he trapped people with chains. He walked down the building and he went room to room at will. There's nobody in there that could really fight him. And uh, did as he pleased and he killed, I think, over 30 something people. So it was terrible. Uh, there, there was a case, it was overseas in Asia, maybe Japan or China. There was a guy on, the, on, a, on a train. This was years ago. Uh, so, you know, I might be messing up some of the details here, but. I believe he also killed like 30 something or stabbed like 35 people with a knife and killed a whole bunch of people so it's like 
you know, yes, the choice of weapon does have an impact and all this stuff. And I know AR-15s look bad, but taking them away from law-abiding citizens is not going to solve the problem when you have 400 million guns in the country. Criminals are still going to access them, you know. Um, so that just makes absolutely no sense to me because even if you take all these guns away from from your legal gun owners, um, it's going to be even more of a free reign for criminals because they're still going to take firearms, modify them, make them automatic, do whatever they want. There's going to be zero resistance from the general public and it will just be the police at that point. So that's my, my rant on firearms for the day. Uh, sorry if that's a bit long-winded. But but back to the free. Um, so yeah, so today, like I said, we're going to New York. We're gonna see what we can do from there. Um, you know, I'll probably post a separate video once I get out of there, you know, seeing what we can get. I, I would like to get something that puts me over the thousand dollar mark for the day that that's my goal for today i mean i don't know if it's likely because i didn't start like super early i i think the load came in at like nine o'clock i was up at like eight so so we'll see i mean things are slow moving at times in this industry like the the driving like when you're actually driving that's the only part you can really count on when you when you go to a loading dock you might get held up there for hours my my first load I did through a like a dispatcher or a load board, however you want to call it, I got held up um, at the airport for over three hours for a small package, and it was and it had nothing to do with me. It was just a some sort of clerical error within the paperwork that the load had been transferred to a different broker, and they wanted to know they wanted me to say who that was, and then lo and behold. It had actually been who I said the entire time, but they couldn't verify that on their own, uh, which sucked for me because it held me up um, for like three hours, and I had bid way too low for that load because you know it's my first time using that service. I just kind of wanted to get on the board and get a feel for how it worked. Uh, but the takeaway was I did learn that I needed to get a mobile printer because. I didn't have one, and that's important in this industry. At times, you have to print out a BOL, and I, I didn't have uh, a way to do that. Luckily, the, the lady was nice enough in the office. I asked if I could email it to her. She printed it out for me, and that was it. You know, went on my merry way. Um, and and I, I, like it wasn't even a long, long run. It was a short one, so it was local work, and I, I took it for her extremely low like i think even after the the extra pay for the waiting it was probably like a hundred bucks so it came out to like i mean it was if all had gone well it probably would have been like a dollar fifty a mile but when you're doing that short of a distance you don't want to do dollar fifty a mile runs you want like at least 250 bucks even if you're going from like one city to 30 miles away you want to stick to your guns at that even if it's a, a pound package something very small uh, I I had one the other day uh, it was going 29 miles and I got $250 for that small deadhead 29 miles the package weighed I think 25 pounds for that one actually um, so that worked out to like over eight dollars a mile, which is great. That's kind of like where you want to operate in within the, the local workspace. Now I took one going a bit further, going a hundred and maybe it was like 120 miles or something. It was about a two-hour ride to New Hampshire, and that one was also 250 dollars. Um, but that was just you know that was came out to like two dollars a mile. Which is still good. It's not bad for for local work. It's not ideal though. I mean, it would have been great if I got that for like four hundred dollars, because it's not that far, you know. But you, you gotta also kind of be honest with yourself. I'm not going that far. I'm in a Sprinter van. The van gets between seventeen and twenty-one miles to the gallon when you're when you've got minimal weight. 
and that package weighed, I think, one pound or two pounds. Um, so it's like, you really got to kind of weigh out your options. But, uh, but yeah, so that's going to be the end of my riff for, for right now. Uh, maybe later on today, I can do a separate one updating about, you know, what what actually took place with my load out of uh, New York. So I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Stay safe.